Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Rajat and today we will be discussing the question Stone Game 4. In this question, we have Alice and Bob taking turns to play a game with Alice going first. Initially, there are n stones in a pile. On each player's turn, that player makes a move consisting of removing any non-zero square number of stones in the pile. Also, if a player cannot make a move, he or she loses the game. Now, we are given a positive integer n and we need to return true if and only if Alice wins the game, otherwise we return false. We need to assume that both players play optimally. So in the first example, we are given n equals to 1 and we return true because Alice can remove one coin and win the game. And similarly in the rest of the examples, we'll first see what the question is all about and how we play this game. So we are given n equals to 4, but for now let's first discuss what the problem is. We have Alice and Bob and they are playing a game. The game is we have certain amount of stones given to us and at each given turn any of the player whose turn it is can take out square number of non-zero stones. That means Alice can take out 4 stones at a time or she can take out 8 stones and same goes for the bob. Now what is the value of n represent in this particular problem? n is the number of stones initially given to us. So as we know that it will be Alice's turn to start. She can initially take all the 4 stones at once leaving nothing for bob and hence winning the game. Now. We come across n equals to 2. In this case, there are two stones present and the first turn is of Alice. She can only take one stone as one is the smallest value which is a square. So she takes one stone and now it's turn for Bob to make the move. He also takes one stone leaving nothing for Alice and that's why this time Bob's win the game. We can also see this n equals to 2 as a way that if there are two stones, whoever is going first when there are two stones will lose the game. In this instance, Alice went first, so she lost the game, Bob wins the game. So for n equals to 2 will return false. Now let's see when the number of stones is 6. In this case, when Alice goes first, she can take out 4 stones at once, leaving behind 2 stones for Bob. Now, in the previous example, we stated the fact that in the game with two stone, whoever is going first will lose the game. We can make out by using the previously calculated value of n equals to 2, which states that in this case, as Bob is going first in the game of two stones, he will lose and Alice will win the particular game. Now, this is just a way to show that how we can use the previously recorded values and find out the next set of values. So in order to make it more clear, let's see that in our tabular form. The values represented over here are whether Alice wins the game for the particular number of stones or not. We already know that when the number of stone is 1, Alice will win the game. And also we have calculated that when the number of stones is 2, Alice will not win the game. Now we come across when the number of stones is 3. In this case, what Alice can do is she can take out one stone, leaving behind two stone for Bob. With the previous discussion, we know that as Bob is going first in the two stone game, Alice will win this particular game because she will be the last one to pick up the stone from the stack that is given to us. So Bob will take one more stone, leaving behind the last stone for Alice to pick up, thus making her the winner of this particular game and so we put the value true at this particular index. So for 3 stones, Alice will win the game. Now we come across the number of stone is 4. So as we have seen earlier, if the number of stones is a perfect square, then Alice will surely win the game as she can take out all the stone at once. So when the number of stones is 4, Alice will win the game. Now we'll discuss when there are 5 stones given to us. In this case, 
Alice in the first turn can make only two moves. She can either take one stone or she can take four stones. Now let's discuss both of these conditions. When Alice takes one stone, she leaves four stones in the stack and it is Bob who will be starting off with the four stones. We see in this particular table, whoever starts with the four stones will win the game. So as Bob is going to start with four stones, he will win the game, thus in turn making Alice lose the game. Let's discuss that again. When Alice is making a move and picking one stone from the stack of five stone given to us, she is leaving four stones into the stack and it is Bob who will be starting off with four stones. So Bob in that case can pick up all the four stones at once leaving no stone for Alice. Thus the game played with five stones will be lost by Alice and we'll put false into a table. But we need to take into consideration all the cases and all the moves that Alice can make. And there still remains one more case wherein Alice can take four number of stones at once. When she takes four stones in the first try, she leaves behind one stone for Bob to pick up. Bob picks up that stone and leaves no stone for Alice. Thus, Alice again lose the game. So no matter how many stones Alice picks, she will always lose the game. So. For 5 stones, Alice will always lose the game. Let's discuss this approach again. We have now 6 stones with us. Alice can now make 2 operations. Either she can take 1 stone in the first try or 4 stones in the first try. If she takes 1 stone in the first try, she leave behind 5 stones and it is Bob who will be starting first. So at 5 stones, Whoever is starting off first will lose the game. That means Bob lose the game. And as Bob lose the game, which clearly implies Alice will win the game. Here we need not to calculate further. As we have found out, there is one case where Alice can win the particular stone game. So we will just put the value true at this particular index and be done with it. As initially the number of stones given to us was 6 we need to return the value that is present at this particular index. In this particular problem, we are using the concept what we call dynamic programming. In a nutshell, what we are doing is for any number of stones, we are trying to find out what all are the possible first move that Alice can make and then finding out what was the answer for the remaining number of stones from Bob's side. This is all for the explanation part and I'll suggest you to try this problem on your own first. And if you still have any doubt, you can always come back to the video. Now it's time to code this particular approach. So as discussed, we need to store the intermediate results. We need to store it from all the way to 1 to n. So we will define a boolean array with the length n plus 1. Now we are done with it. We know that. Initially, the dp of 1 will always be true. So we can put this value as it is given in the problem that n will be a minimum 1. Now we need to iterate over the whole array starting from 2 to n. So we'll write that. Now comes a part wherein we need to find out what all values or what all valid number of stones that Alice can pick up in the first try. So Alice can pick up 1, 4, 9, 16, 25 and so on in the first try. The number should always be a perfect square. So all we need to do is find all the perfect square that exist between 1 and the index i. So in order to do so, we can write. Now what this is doing is, is it is starting from 1. It is checking if this square is less than i and incrementing k. Once we have taken out the number of square stones that Alice will take from the first try, we need to find out for the remaining stones what was the answer that we already have in this dp array. And the answer that 
we are seeing from the DP array is now from Bob's perspective. So that will be a negation of the value because in the DP array, all the answers are from Alice's perspective. The remaining number of stones in the DP array that we need to find out is I minus K into K. If this says that at this particular number of stones, Alice won't be able to win. But here we are seeing this from the perspective of Bob. It says that Alice can win. So we need to put true at this particular index in the DP array. Otherwise, by default, we know that Boolean initializes an array with a false value. And once we have found out that there exists a certain condition where Alice has won this particular game with this particular number of stones, we need not to go any further into this particular looping. We can close this loop. There is no need for it. Once we are done with this, at the end, we need to simply return what exists at this particular dp of n. Let's go through this code once again. What we are doing is we are initialize the dp array. Initially the value at dp of 1 is true. This becomes our base case and we now start off with i equals to 2 till n value. Now for every stone we need to figure out all the possible number of stones that Alice can pick in the first try. She can either pick 1, 4, 9, 16, 25 as long as this value is less than i. So we need to have this loop which calculates that. There are multiple ways to do this particular thing. I've chosen this way. It seems easy. So for every value k equals to 1, I'm going up till its square is less than i and incrementing k at each index. Now we need to find out what was the answer that resides in the dp array for the rest of the stones. And we are now seeing this answer from Bob's perspective. So that becomes a negation for Alice's perspective. So we see if the answer for the remaining stone was anywhere false, then for the number of stones i, that becomes true. And we break that because we have found out one certain way for Alice to win the game for i number of stones. We do this continuously and fill in this dp array until we reach the last index. At the end, we just simply return what value holds at dp of n, which will tell us whether Alice can win the game or not with n number of stones. Now, let's try to run this code for all the sample test cases. So here it needs to be less than or equals to because for all the values wherein it is a perfect square, that means i is a perfect square, then it should be true because for the value dp of 0, the value will be false and it will make true. That's why we were getting a wrong answer for the perfect square. Now let's again try to run this code. So it ran successfully. Let's submit this. So it got submitted successfully. The time complexity in this case is n into under root of n. Now why is that? It is because the first loop, if you will see, this is going till n times and the second loop is going, if you assume for the last value n, it is going for under root n times because we are only going till square root of n. With this condition, you can make that out. Now the space complexity in this case is O of n because we are using a DP array to store the intermediate results. That's all for today's video. I hope this video helped you in understanding this problem better. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe. Do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.